Maximus's strength was simply too great. Notori and the others couldn't help but tremble in fear. Facing such a terrifying power, they were helpless. If they were in Tamer's position, they would probably be killed without leaving a single trace behind. How could this Maximus be so strong? Notori's expression was incomparably complicated, constantly changing. On the one hand, it was a pity that he might not be able to obtain Maximus' secret, for such a secret would no doubt allow his internal strength base to soar unabated. On the other hand, he was also glad that he hadn't confronted Maximus directly this time, for that would have spelled certain death. Teomer was also shocked. This was a top-quality divine skill, not some random upper-class divine skill. At this moment, Teomer had just been sent flying by the Nine Dragons' divine seal, and the divine origin in his body had dispersed. Facing such a powerful attack, he could only grit his teeth and use the violent Thunder God Hammer to block. At the same time, he circulated his lightning divine body with all his strength. The Thunder God battle armor wrapped around Teomer tightly, trying to defend against this powerful attack. The entire world seemed to shake at this moment. The unparalleled strength of the Purple Cloud Divine Arm sent Teomer crashing into the ground, creating a huge crater and filling the air with flames. Trees collapsed. Mountains crumbled. The landscape was transformed. Maximus stared at the huge crater with a serious expression. He knew that Teomer wouldn't be defeated so easily. In the face of Maximus's serious expression, the miserable Teomer flew out from the crater. The divine origin in his body was crazily surging as it recovered. The tenth level of the Purple Cloud Divine Arm was a top-quality divine skill. Every time it was used, it would consume a terrifying amount of divine origin. With Maximus's current strength, he was still unable to use it continuously. Teomer stared at his injuries. His eyes were filled with coldness. He pronounced, Very good. You are one of the few who has brought me to this point. Really, it was only Meshia and Mirak before you. I was careless before. Now, I will take this bout seriously. After a pause for effect, Teomer roared furiously. Die! His body flickered and with a flash of lightning, he disappeared from the scene. Then, he closed in on Maximus at an incredible speed. Maximus's divine soul was frantically searching, but he could only roughly see Teomer's movement and attack. In the next moment, Teomer suddenly appeared behind Maximus. He swung the explosive thunder divine hammer in his hand fiercely. Maximus turned around and struck out with the Purple Cloud Divine Arm. The battle continuously sent out shockwaves, causing everyone present to tremble in fear. However, soon, Maximus began to fall into a disadvantageous position. The energy consumption of the Purple Cloud Divine Arm was too great, and Maximus couldn't maintain it. This Tamer is much stronger than Meshia, he mused. It seems like Teomer really is the strongest cultivator among the three hegemonic powers. I am still far from being a match for him. If only I were a high-level seventh tribulation true god. Since he could not use the purple cloud divine arm continuously, Maximus would deploy the nine dragons divine seals to assist him. He felt he couldn't hold on much longer. No, he needed something more powerful. With a sigh, he took out the Nine Pythons fire controlling flag. The dark clouds in the sky had completely vanished. Instead, a terrifying vortex of flames had been stirred up. The Nine Pythons fire controlling flag released an extraordinary power. Tamer paused for a moment, then quickly retreated. Chaos Divine Tool? A mere lower plane ascendant actually has such an artifact? Could it be that the secret of this kid is the tool? He thought to himself. 
A look of disappointment then appeared on Tamer's face. He was somewhat deflated by the thought. He had expected something more spectacular. After all, the Rockbrook family's power was great, and their foundation was rich. They certainly didn't lack lower-class Chaos Divine tools, and they would not hesitate to bestow them upon Teomer, who was the number one cultivator of the younger generation. Although he was disappointed, Teomer would not let Maximus go because of this. After all, this brat had insulted him. Huh, do you think that only you have Chaos Divine tools? Teomer sneered. He clapped his palm in the void, and a mirror appeared out of thin air. In the next moment, a force that was not any weaker than the nine pythons fire flag swept out. The ninth heaven lightning mirror was an extremely valuable lower class chaos divine tool. For many years, he had been cultivating it and had developed a relationship with the mirror's artifact spirit. Now that he had broken through to the eighth tribulation, he was able to wield its power fully. The Ninth Heaven Lightning Mirror and the Nine Pythons Fire Controlling Flag were locked in a stalemate. Maximus waved his sleeve. The flag's formation enveloped both of them. Huh? Tamer began. His expression turned serious. So that's how it is. It also has the function of trapping, but it is definitely inferior to my Ninth Heaven Lightning Mirror. This was the nature of divine tools. If such an object had trapping ability, its attack power tended to be weaker. Even though he was within the Nine Pythons fire controlling formation, Tamer was not afraid at all. His internal strength base was stronger than Maximus's, and his divine body was also of the highest quality. With the Chaos Divine tool in his hand, Tamer couldn't think of any reason he should lose this battle. The nine fire pythons roared out from a plane of flames, lunging at Tamer with monstrous momentum. He released the energy of the ninth heaven's lightning mirror in response. In the next moment, the mirror released terrifying lightning that could destroy the heavens and extinguish the earth. Its power seemed endless. A fiery python was struck by the ninth heaven's divine lightning, and it immediately fell to the ground lifeless. As the lightning continued to strike, one python after another was rendered inert. Maximus's expression was solemn. Tamer's current destructive power had undoubtedly surpassed that of Meshia, who had also fallen into the nine pythons fire controlling formation. The fire pythons could of course reincarnate, as they were figments of energy. But still, Teomer's strength was extraordinary. Every time one of the pythons came close, he would use the sky-trembling divine thunder move to deflect it. Gradually, the speed of the fiery pythons' rebirths was getting slower and slower. Teomer's eyes sparkled. He uttered, Very good! When the serpents can no longer be reborn, it will be time for you to die and your Chaos Divine tools will belong to me. This tool's regenerative ability impressed him, and he imagined that if he obtained it, he could go on to exchange it for another suited to his constitution. At that point, his strength would surely increase greatly. How could Teomer have known that this Nine Python fire controlling formation had in fact been obtained from Ancient Profound Dragon? and had thus originated in the Heaven and Earth sect. Just then, the nine fire serpents suddenly retreated and flew into the sky. Under Teomer's surprised gaze, they merged together and formed a monumental serpent whose power soared. Huh? Teomer uttered. He had originally thought that he was going to win, but now he frowned. Teomer was now hiding behind the ninth Heaven lightning mirror and had no choice but to dodge. He was in a sorry state. Once he was hit by the flames, his expression turned ugly as he found that the sky-trembling lightning divine body was in danger of being burned and collapsing. Damn it! Why is this attack so powerful? Tamer blurted. At the same time, 
He craved Maximus's chaos divine tools more than ever. In a frenzy, he poured the divine essence in his body into the ninth heaven lightning mirror. It flickered with lightning radiance. Now, more lightning than ever before shot out from the object. Maximus's serpent had now fallen into a disadvantageous position. Every time it reincarnated, it became more difficult for it to support itself. However, Maximus had cultivated the Nine Flames fire formula to a profound level, and his recovery ability was even stronger than Tamer's. Therefore, he was able to persist for a long period of time. A smile of determination appeared on Tamer's face. Maximus knew the moment had arrived. He would have to release General Slim, joined by Skeleton General 2 and Skeleton General 3 for good measure. Surely, Taomer would cower in the face of all three skeleton warriors. Maximus was also anxious for this battle to end. He had fully developed the middle range of the Seventh Tribulation and stabilized the new level through various intense battles. He now felt the bottleneck to the late Seventh Tribulation approaching, and he really didn't need to engage in further battles to bolster his strength. In other words, there was no need to draw this out. Yet just as he was about to take out the White Bone token, the Nine Pythons' fire-controlling formation suffered a violent attack. It trembled and fluctuated, as if on the verge of collapse. Maximus's heart sank. Meanwhile, in the land of reincarnation, several people emerged from the depths in a sorry state, with pale faces. It seemed they had just endured a great battle, these people were Meshia, Mirak, and their cohort. Damn it! Why are there so many strange fish in the reincarnation sea? Mirak exclaimed. His heart ached. He had lost a few of his elite subordinates because of those strange fish. One had to know that many of these elites had the qualifications to break through to the ancient emperor's secret realm. Yet they had fallen just like that. Meshia's expression wasn't any better. The reincarnation sea had been much more difficult to navigate than she had assumed. The strange fish were not exceptionally strong. Most of them were at the fourth tribulation, and only a handful had reached the fifth. However, her strength had been similarly suppressed. They were fighting at the level of fourth tribulation true gods. As for those in her cohort, most currently had Third Tribulation strength. Sure, she could still use her bloodline. But there were so many. Strange fish. It was overwhelming. Damn it! Meshia shouted as she thought of her goal being thwarted by a bunch of fish. Are we really going to give up just like that? Mirak challenged. Are you kidding? You saw what we faced back there. We almost died, Meshia shot back. Then she thought of Maximus, and a bright light flashed across her eyes. She ventured. Well, why don't we find someone to join us? Find someone to work with? Mirak asked, startled, then said slowly. Okay, that's a possibility, but the person would need to be as strong as us. Otherwise, they would drag us down. Behind Mirak, all of his subordinates smiled bitterly. They had already lost a few of their peers. They understood now just how ruthless Mirak was. Of course, I have a candidate, Meshia announced. It's Maximus Alexei, isn't it? Mirak immediately proposed. Meshia nodded, then advised. He left the land of reincarnation not long ago. We should be able to catch up with him as long as we move quickly. Everyone immediately increased their speed. Soon, they had reached the edge of the land of reincarnation. They were shocked to see the battle transpiring just beyond them. A strange formation appeared in the void and rumbling sounds could be heard. They could vaguely see nine fire pythons hissing within the formation. 
Mirak's expression changed drastically. He could sense a vast and powerful energy from the formation. This was clearly the energy of a Chaos Divine Tool. This, this is a Chaos Divine Tool. Could it be Teomer? He wondered aloud. He couldn't think of another cultivator who would possess such an object. There were several great families who had these artifacts, but they would only be given to the most prized members of the younger generation. Mirak, Meshia, and Teomer had all been the beneficiaries of such Chaos Divine tools. Further, they were only able to use these tools because of their 8th Tribulation internal strength bases. Mirak's eyes focused as he glanced at Meshia. Wait a minute, he thought to himself. Could it be? Sensing Mirak's gaze, Meshia nodded. Mirak took a deep breath. It really was that young man Maximus. He used his divine soul to sense the remaining auras left behind in the void. He soon realized that both sides of the battle were incomparably powerful entities. Mirak had never underestimated Maximus, but now he was even more fearful of him. As for the other aura, Meshia interrupted his thoughts, proposing, Tamer is here. She had come into contact with Tamer before and could immediately sense his presence. Amazing, amazing. He actually forced Tamer to this point. Mirak exclaimed, then laughed loudly. With this kid's help, and with Tamer's help, the chances of us passing through the Sea of Reincarnation will greatly increase. Meshia poured cold water on his enthusiasm. Huh. The problem is that the two of them are currently engaged in battle. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. We need to intervene. The two of them looked at each other and attacked at the same time. Supreme Sword Physique, one with the sword, Meshia shouted. Supreme True Spirit Slash. Mirak followed up with Eight-Armed Demon Divine Body Condense, Heaven Shrouding Demon Palm. Sword intent soared into the sky. Both of them had unleashed incomparably powerful attacks, but they still held back. Neither of them had used their Chaos Divine Tool. Their sole focus was on stopping the battle between the two. The attacks landed on the Nine Pythons fire controlling formation, and the incomparably powerful impact caused the formation to produce cracking sounds. This was the sensation Maximus had sensed before. The two of them attacked quickly. They had just attacked from the Sea of Reincarnation, and their appearance was shocking. It's Mirak and Meshia, Kiba shouted. Why are they here? Baskoro added. <laughs> With these two people attacking, that kid's formation will be broken without a doubt. At that time, Teoma will be able to take him down easy. Another disciple chimed in. Teomer's subordinates thought that Mirak and Meshia were helping Teomer, and they all laughed out loud in excitement. In contrast, Zink and the others were in a gloomy mood. In the face of Mirak and Meshia, what could they do? Within the Nine Pythons fire controlling formation, Teomer naturally noticed the unusual behavior of the energy around him. Someone is attacking? It just so happens that they are working together from the inside, Teomer shouted. He was incomparably excited. The Ninth Heaven Lightning Mirror continuously released lightning, blasting out in all directions. He wanted to launch a pincer attack from both the inside and the outside, and break the Nine Pythons' fire-controlling formation. Meanwhile, Maximus immediately gave up on summoning Slim, and hurriedly sent a spell into the Nine Pythons' fire-controlling flag. The formation suddenly dissipated. He wanted to preserve the energy that still remained within it. At the same time, he was perplexed by the identity of the interveners. They were clearly powerful, but who would feel compelled to change the terms of the battle in this way? Just then, Mirak and Meshia appeared in his line of sight. It's you guys, Maximus blurted. His expression was cold. 
Tamer saw them at the same time and added, Indeed, just as I suspected. In the next second, Tamer's eyes flashed with a sharp light. He stared at Meshia and Tamer with vigilance in his heart. Tamer couldn't imagine they were there to help him. They didn't have that kind of relationship. Mirag didn't seem to mind being stared at by Maximus and Tamer. Instead, he said something that shocked them both. Don't be so paranoid. We are just trying to prevent you both from suffering serious injuries. We don't want this to escalate to a life and death situation. You see, we want to form an alliance with the two of you before returning to the land of reincarnation. What do you think of that idea? Alliance? Tamer and Maximus repeated simultaneously. They looked surprised. They had never thought that Mirak and Meshia had attacked with this in mind. Mirak said, The land of reincarnation is more dangerous than we imagined. It is difficult to get past it with our own abilities, so I need help. Both of you have extraordinary strength. If we ally with the two of you, the possibility of the four of us arriving at the passageway will greatly increase. He paused to make sure they were following, then went on. I'm sure the two of you are aware of the benefits of reincarnating into a miniature world. However, if we can't even reincarnate there, how are we going to benefit from it? Why don't we work together to reincarnate first? As for the grudges between the two of you, we can use this opportunity to resolve them, or wait until we leave the miniature world to settle them. Maximus had passed through the land of reincarnation, so he naturally knew the dangers it posed. After hearing Mirak's words, he knew that Mirak and Meshia had failed in their attempt to enter the sea of reincarnation. Otherwise, given Meshia's disposition, how could she choose to ally with him? Both of them had a grudge against each other. However, it was also because of this that Maximus had a clearer understanding of the dangers of the sea. Even Meshia and Mirak, who had joined forces, had failed, and Meshia had been forced to put aside her pride. Maximus was silent as he seriously considered the possibility of an alliance. How could he not be tempted by the benefits of reincarnating into a miniature world? However, Tamer had yet to make it to the Sea of Reincarnation, so he had no idea how dangerous it was. Huh. I can make it through the land of reincarnation by myself. Why should I join forces with you? He challenged. Alone? Brother Rockbrook thinks too highly of himself. Meshia shot back, venting the anger she had been feeling for some time. Tamer revealed a look of disdain as he released his internal strength base and aura. He was still at the peak of the Eighth Tribulation. As he did this, Meshia and Mirak took on an expression of solemn awe. Seeing this, Teomer felt even more confident and arrogant in his heart. It was now indisputable that he had exceeded the strength of Meshia and Mirak, his two true peers. Mirak wanted to say something more, but Meshia stopped him with a sound transmission. Teomer is proud and arrogant. He won't believe us if he hasn't experienced the Sea of Reincarnation for himself. Even if we tell him our experiences in detail, we will only be mocked. Why put ourselves through that? On the other hand, we need him. Maximus alone isn't enough. Whether we like it or not, we must wait until Teomer experiences the Reincarnation Sea himself. After that point, he will not refuse to form an alliance with us. True, true. Mirak agreed. Then he looked at Maximus as he continued. We understand your decision, Tamer. But what about you, Maximus? What do you say? Maximus could not resist the temptation of being reincarnated. After a while, he slowly nodded, then reasoned. Yes, but I also have conditions. I hope I can bring some people with me. Mirak retorted. Fine, but not too many. If we have a whole army, we will not be able to take care of them. 
Maximus would have known this even if Mirak hadn't said it. Looking at the few people behind Mirak, Maximus knew what would happen to them in the Sea of Reincarnation. Seeing Meshia, Mirak, and Maximus forming an alliance, Teomer's facial expression finally changed. No matter how confident Teomer was, he didn't think that he would be a match for Maximus and the other two. In fact, until now, Teomer still had some doubts. How could Maximus and the other two form an alliance so easily? Why did they trust each other just like that? Of course, Teomer wouldn't know that Maximus and the other two had already gone to the land of reincarnation and then returned or escaped. The three of them had already experienced its terror. After Maximus and the other two formed an alliance, they no longer paid any attention to Teomer. Maximus flew towards Zink and his group, asking them who was willing to enter the land of reincarnation again. Teomer's expression kept changing. At this time, he regretted rejecting the offer too quickly. Thinking of this, a faint killing intent flashed across his eyes. He wanted to take this opportunity to severely injure one of the three and assure he would maintain the upper hand. However, Maximus, Mirak, and Meshia were experts with incomparably powerful divine souls. Tamer's killing intent was faint, but it was still noticeable to them. The three of them had a stern look on their faces. Without batting an eyelid, they changed their position, getting into a battle formation. Tamer knew that his plan had been noticed. He immediately gave up on the idea of attacking. Since his opponent was already on guard, he wouldn't be able to succeed if he attacked again. Maximus returned his attention to Zink. Tamer also went to his subordinates to figure out the backstory of Meshia and Mirak's appearance. Teomer was stunned by this. Mirak and Meshia had actually escaped from the Land of Reincarnation. He mused aloud. So, they are speaking from experience. They've already been. I wonder whether it's the same for Maximus. That makes sense. No wonder the three of them formed an alliance so quickly. After understanding the full situation, Teomer's expression turned ugly. This meant that Maximus had failed in the land of reincarnation, and that Mirak and Meshia had also failed. The danger there was clearly greater than he had imagined. Realizing the extraordinary nature of the land of reincarnation, Teomer no longer had 100% confidence. However, the pride in his heart prevented him from lowering his head to seek the alliance. He thought to himself, Maximus is weaker than me. Mirak and Meshia were on par with me in the past, but now they are a few levels lower than me in terms of internal strength. They won't be able to make it. That doesn't mean I can't pass the trial. On the other hand, when Heba found out that Maximus wanted to enter the land of reincarnation again, she was totally shocked. Immediately, many people advised Maximus against this. Even if Mirak and the others formed an alliance, it wouldn't be safe. Moreover, everyone knew that this alliance would only last until they reached the reincarnation passageway. At that point, it would be every person for themselves, and there would no doubt be a great battle. Meshia and Maximus had a grudge against each other, and Teomer was also full of hostility toward Maximus. When the time came for them to fight, it was obvious that Maximus would be in a disadvantageous position. If Maximus could have still summoned the skeleton general, they wouldn't have been so nervous. Unfortunately, due to the different laws in the miniature world, that was impossible. Maximus, on the other hand, had noticed a sense of confident resolve in the face of everyone's admonishment. With Mirak and the others moving forward together, the chances of success were extremely high. How could he not give it a try? If he failed, he could just retreat. Maximus was quite confident 
that he would be able to escape unscathed. However, if he succeeded, he would save tens of thousands of years of internal strength-based cultivation. He would be able to advance to the Eighth Tribulation in one go. Sensing that Maximus had already made up his mind, Zink advised, Since you are so determined, we can only hope that you reincarnate in the miniature world and seize your destiny. But only I will join you, as I don't want to put the others at risk. Meshia was still alone. All of her subordinates had fallen. Mirak was also by himself. After witnessing the dangers of the Sea of Reincarnation, he knew that only those who were at the top could protect themselves. Tamer had brought a lot of people with him, and perhaps because he knew that Maximus and the other two might pose danger to him, he had decided to bring nearly all of them to the reincarnation land. Notori was among them. He wouldn't even consider sitting this one out. He didn't know whether Maximus had told his companions about their grudge, but he couldn't risk it. If he had told them and Notori decided to stay back, no doubt Maximus's followers would seize the opportunity to enact revenge. Due to his blind confidence in Tamer's strength, Notori completely ignored the possibility of dying in the land of reincarnation. The group once again entered the land of reincarnation. With their previous experience, Maximus and the other three were able to overcome all obstacles and quickly arrived at the Crimson Wasteland. Tamer and his group followed closely behind, perhaps because they did not expect the land of reincarnation to suppress their internal strength bases. Many of them had uneasy expressions on their faces. When they arrived at the blood-red wasteland, Maximus and the other three took turns attacking, using the method they had used before. When Mirak and Meshia attacked, Maximus and Zink accumulated their divine essence and unleashed their ultimate moves. Mirak and Meshia then accumulated their divine origin. It was Maximus and Zink's turn to attack and stop the Ghostfire Skeletons. They split into two groups and fought in turns, deploying powerful moves one after another. Heaven Shrouding Demon Palm! Supreme True Spirit Slash! Nine Revelation Spirit Break! Soon they had cleared a path through the Ghostfire Skeletons. They were moving so fast that the skeletons could not reach a critical mass. In less than two minutes, Maximus and the others had already rushed out of the encirclement. Very good, let's go, Mirak exclaimed, delighted. Indeed, working together was extraordinary. Mirak still remembered that it had taken tremendous effort to pass through the Crimson Wasteland last time. The four of them sped toward the strange tree area. This time, Tamer and the others stayed behind them. After all, this was the first time they had ventured into the Blood Wasteland, so they had no experience. Damn it! Tamer could only watch helplessly as Maximus and the other three left them far behind, and he was extremely furious. All of you, attack! He roared furiously at his followers. In the next moment, a sky full of attacks was launched at the Ghostfire Skeleton. Dominating Heaven Thunder God Fist! Tamer shouted. Ferocious thunderbolts were like monstrous waves devouring the Ghostfire Skeletons. A large number of skeletons were annihilated by the thunderbolts, clearing a sizable area in front of them. They were now preparing to rush out of the wasteland. However, at this moment, more and more Ghostfire Skeletons crawled out from the cracks in the ground. Tamer and the others had only run halfway when they were once again surrounded. Tamer coldly harumped. He didn't put these ghostfire skeletons in his eyes at all and was about to throw out another punch. But to his shock, he found his divine essence had plummeted. Not good, he uttered. He had immediately figured out the nature of the problem and went on. I never thought 
that the internal strength base would be suppressed to the fifth tribulation true god realm. If I want to use the tyrannical thunder divine fist, I need to accumulate energy. Natori and the others also discovered the problem, so they could only use ordinary techniques to block their opponents. As a result, more and more Ghostfire skeletons followed, and the pressure they faced became greater and greater. No wonder Mirak and the other three split into two groups, Tamer mused, then ordered his subordinates to do the same. After splitting into two groups, Tamer and the others quickly passed through the zone. In no time at all, they arrived at the reincarnation sea. Maximus and Zink once again stood there and sighed. Mirak explained his own experience there. At the same time, he pointed to a series of rafts he had made out of the strange trees that grew in this land. It was his understanding that only sea craft made from this wood would be able to navigate the sea. He discoursed, The reincarnation ocean will suppress our strength once again. Fortunately, we have many trump cards. The quality of the divine essence we've cultivated and the divine skills we've comprehended are still there so our strength far surpasses that of the third and fourth tribulation. However, there are strange fish in the sea. I call them ghost fish, and the weakest one is equivalent to an ordinary early fourth tribulation true god. A single ghost fish isn't scary, but when they form schools, we can't underestimate them. To be frank, Meshia and I only made it halfway across the sea. Zink was surprised, given Mirax and Meshia's extraordinary abilities. How far would they get this time? He didn't have much confidence in their chances of succeeding. Perhaps Mirak could see Zink's concern. He smiled and said, Ha! Don't worry too much. To be honest, the reason why the two of us only managed to make it halfway was we were distracted by taking care of my subordinates. We would have made it much further, if it had just been the two of us. Zink nodded in recognition of the point and immediately became more confident. Mirak and Meshia together could at least make it two-thirds of the way. With Maximus, whose combat strength was not any weaker than theirs, the chances of them making it to the other side would greatly increase. Further, they had Tamer in their cohort now. Maximus stared at the reincarnation ocean, he could see the opposite side with his naked eye. It was such a short distance. If it wasn't for the suppression of the land of reincarnation, he could have jumped over it with a single leap. The group began to move, carrying the wooden boat to the shoreline. The object was now releasing a dazzling crimson radiance. The radiance gradually scattered, but it was retracted to the surface of the wooden boat. At this moment, the wooden boat looked like it was surrounded by a halo. It was strange. Maximus shouted in a low voice as he circulated the divine essence in his body with all his might. Even if it was suppressed by his lowered internal strength base, it could still unleash an incomparably powerful attack. However, when this palm struck the wooden boat, not even a mark could be seen. The wooden boat was still firmly lying there not moving at all. What a powerful defense, Maximus praised. Meshia obviously knew more than Zink. She explained, This is the wood of reincarnation. It doesn't have any powerful defensive abilities when it's in its natural state. But once it's made into something else, let's just say, even if you were at your peak abilities, you wouldn't be able to damage it. Maximus's eyes flashed when he heard this. Since the reincarnation tree was so unique, if he brought it with him and left, he would have an extremely strong defense system. How could Meshia not know what Maximus was thinking? Of course, Mirak was thinking the same thing. They all were. But Meshia said with a smile that was not a smile. The so-called reincarnation wood only has this kind of special function in the land of reincarnation. If you leave this place, it will turn to ashes in an instant. Is that so? 
What a pity. Maximus could not help but muse aloud. Mirax smiled and added, I had the same thoughts and then was equally disappointed. All right, let's cut the crap. The reincarnation ship has already been completed. It's time for us to set off, he added. Then he laughed and waved his sleeve. An invisible force struck the reincarnation ship, which was pushed into the ocean and began to float. Mirak was the first to embark, followed by Maximus, Zinc, and Messia. The ship then began to slowly move. At the same time, Tamer and his cohort arrived at the area of the reincarnation tree. Everyone was extremely careful, as they were afraid that the reincarnation wood was an existence similar to a ghost flame skeleton. Tamer was deep in thought. Why do I feel like I've seen these strange crimson trees before? Ah, forget it. Let's hurry on our way. We're too far behind. After passing through the wood of reincarnation, Tamer and his group arrived at the sea. Sensing the suppressive abilities of this body of water, everyone's expression turned ugly. Tamer frowned, at the same time estimating that based on this effect, the others had no doubt been suppressed to the third tribulation. Notori's face was pale. He would now only have access to second tribulation level strength, and surely there were entities stronger than that in this sea. The more he thought about it, the more danger Notori felt. Why had he been so sure back then that he would be safe by following Tamer? What should he do now? Return? His heart was filled with deep regret. Meanwhile, Tamer also discovered Maximus and the other three who were on the reincarnation ship. He immediately turned to one of the people beside him and said, I remember that you have a grade six universe ship. Take it out. Yes, his subordinate complied. However, the universe cruiser was actually unable to fly in the land of reincarnation. As soon as it hit the water, it began to sink. The owner of the universe cruiser had a pained expression. This was a grade six universe cruiser. He had spent a huge amount of cosmos points on it. And now it had sunk just like that. This man didn't dare to express any regret. He could only sigh that his luck was so bad. Tamer seemed to be lost in thought as he mused. It seems like not every ship can sail on the Sea of Reincarnation. I remember that the only ship that can sail on the Sea of Reincarnation is a wooden ship made from the wood of reincarnation. Wait, the wood of reincarnation? That's what those crimson trees are. His expression turned doggedly determined. At the same time, Maximus and the others had made it about one-fourth of the way across the sea and had entered the territory of the Ghost Fish. As Maximus and his cohort slowly cruised across the water's surface, the water began to churn violently. Be careful, the ghost fish have arrived, Mirax shouted. As soon as he finished speaking, dozens of black shadows shot out from the water's surface. They were like sharp swords, aimed straight at the human warriors. In Maximus's divine soul, he finally found the exact appearance of these ghost fish. Their entire body was burning with a pale blue flame. The flame was faint, yet extremely terrifying. Maximus was shocked. Wasn't this exactly the same as the ghost fire skeletons? They were divided, according to strength, into blue fire, green fire, purple fire, and red fire categories. Did this mean they were only encountering the lowest level ghost fish at this point? He was even more surprised that this flame could burn underwater. But after a moment, Maximus couldn't help but laugh and shake his head. Since it was a ghost flame, it naturally wasn't as hot as a real flame. Instead, it was made of gloomy energy. 
and the Sea of Reincarnation wasn't an ordinary sea. Naturally, it wouldn't have the suppressive effect on such a flame. As he was thinking about all of this, Maximus attacked at the same time. The strength of the blue flame ghost fish was roughly equivalent to the early stage of the Fourth Tribulation. This level wasn't enough to threaten Maximus. With the Divine Flame Battle Armor, he struck out with the Divine Flame Battle Fist. A simple punch was enough to easily injure an ordinary mid-fourth calamity true god. The flame rumbled and engulfed several ghost fish in the blink of an eye. At the same time, Mirak, Meshia, and Zink also attacked. The three of them were also relaxed, especially Mirak and Meshia. Their current internal strength base realm was comparable to that of the blue fire ghost fish. In just a few moments, they had killed dozens of fish. Yet just then, Mirak warned, This was only the first wave of attacks. Don't be careless. There will be more and more as we proceed, and their level will keep getting higher. Soon, there might be 1,000 fish at the purple flame level. These fish are equivalent to high-level fourth tribulation true gods. Maximus's and Zink's expressions turned serious. Their vigilance, which had never relaxed, became even more pronounced because of Mirak's warning. Sure enough, every few breaths, the surface of the ocean would churn once more. It was incomparably intense, far more intense than before. Now the sea was marked by vast waves. Powerful auras shot out one after another. Hundreds of ghost fish drilled out of the sea in one go. Although they were all blue fire and green fire ghost fish, they could not be underestimated due to their sheer number. The four of them split the fish evenly. Almost everyone had to deal with dozens of them. Dozens of blue fire ghost fish mixed with one or two green fire ghost fish attacked Maximus. A terrifying pressure pressed down on him. In response, he unleashed the Divine Flame Battle Body. Surging flame swept out like a hurricane, crazily attacking the ghost fish. At this moment, Maximus's internal strength base had been suppressed to the Third Tribulation True God Realm. This realm was quite low for Maximus, but this made the effects of the Divine Flame Battle Body even more dramatic. The pressure brought by the ghost fish was instantly crushed. At this moment, the difference between the fish and the ghost fire skeletons was clear. The ghost fire skeletons obviously didn't have any instincts. They were like automatons with no signs of life. However, when these ghost fish were killed, waves of miserable screams could be heard. These screams weren't made directly. Instead, they were reflected in Maximus's divine soul with a strange fluctuation. Meanwhile, Zink also unleashed his bloodline, the Myriad Flame Serpent Bloodline. The power of the serpent surged out, and every time he swung his fist, it was as if a serpent was roaring. Mirak and Meshia hadn't used their bloodlines and divine bodies yet, but they had both used some powerful skills. At the same time, Tamer and his group had finally finished setting up their reincarnation ship, and they set out. Maximus's ship arrived at the center of the ocean. This was the point where Mirak and Meshia had turned back last time. Maximus had listened carefully to their narrative, but now that he was surrounded by a vast whirlpool of ghostfish, a chill ran down his spine. These fish had nearly all reached the red flame level, and there were nearly a thousand of them. Maximus and Zink were both shocked. Facing so many ghost fish, they had no choice but to use their trump cards. However, due to the limitations of the internal strength base, it was impossible for them to use these trump cards continuously. Every time they used them, it would take some time for them to recover. Immediately, Maximus and Zink broke off into groups, and Mirak and Meshia were divided into one group. The first ones to attack were Maximus and Zink. Golden Immortal Physique Condense! 
purple black fire fuse. Grand mysterious sky spirit slash! Maximus screamed. His terrifying power was unleashed. Purple flames blotted out the sky and the sun. It was like a king of flames had descended, bringing with it a supreme power. All of a sudden, a sharp sword energy rushed out from the flames and swept across the surroundings. A large number of ghost fish were killed by Maximus's powerful attack. Maximus seized this opportunity to fiercely gasp for breath. After that, the flaming sky dancing wheel and nine dragons divine seal appeared by his side and carried out supplementary attacks. The dancing wheel shot out endless fiery light. The divine seal transformed into a huge mountain of energy that carried monstrous strength as it smashed down. Large tracts of ghost fish fell. Seizing this opportunity, the reincarnation ship suddenly accelerated, wanting to rush forward. However, the ghost fish kept shooting out from the ocean's surface, making Maximus suspect that they were endless in number. He took a deep breath. Maximus understood now that their path forward would soon be completely blocked by the ghost fish, and as a result, they would only be able to travel a short distance at a time. Who knew when they would reach the other side of the sea? He mused to himself, This can only go on for so long. When our divine origin is exhausted, we will have no choice but to turn back. The mysterious god sword, the flaming sky dancing wheel, and the nine dragons divine seal unleashed their divine might. Maximus, it's my turn to attack! Zink interjected, then replaced Maximus at the bow of the ship. Maximus didn't use his strongest attack. Firstly, the energy consumption of that attack was too terrifying. And secondly, the current crisis hadn't reached that extent yet. Zink was different. His strength was inferior to that of Maximus and the other two. Even if he used all of his strength, he might not be as efficient. The eighth level dragon flame revolved around him, and one could vaguely hear the roar of a dragon. Serpent, heavenly fire fist, he shouted. The dragon flame transformed into a serpent that quickly charged into the school of ghost fish. However, the effect was negligible. And after cruising for a few more feet, the ship was once again blocked. Seeing this, Zink gritted his teeth and immediately took out his top quality divine weapon. Nine revolutions, serpent break, he shouted. The roar of the serpent became louder and louder, and its energy roared out like a wild gale. Zink's all-out attack had finally allowed the ship of reincarnation to travel a long distance. At this moment, Meshia and Mirak had already finished accumulating their energy. Mirak stood up, puffed out his chest, and declared, Leave it to me and Meshia. You guys step back for now. He had already turned into a terrifying monster. This was the eight-clawed demon divine body. Heaven shrouding demon palm! He screamed. The eight arms of the demon god were unleashed. Demon energy rolled through the air. Highest sword physique, one with the sword, highest true spirit slash! Meshia joined in. Her sword intent swept out, blotting out the sky and covering the sun. It was dense and formidable. When the two of them attacked together, the effect was indeed extraordinary. It was far from what Zink could compare with. The reincarnation ship once again started moving forward slowly. The four kept alternating their attacks. It wasn't easy for them, but it wasn't difficult either. Mirak couldn't help but sigh. This was the advantage of the four of them working together. When he and Meshia had been the only ones who could deal with these ghost fish, it was a terrible situation. Especially when he had to take care of his subordinates, his hands and legs were tied. Even so, he still lost a few elite subordinates, which made his heart ache. Even now, though, they were moving slowly, and soon Tamer and his crew had caught up with them. A large number of purple flame ghost fish surrounded the ship, that Tamer and the others were riding. 
causing many people's faces to turn pale. Tamer had strength in numbers, but the overall power of his group was not greater than Maximus's. Soon, Tamer's subordinates were injured. Not long after that, someone fell to the ground, not able to move at all. Tamer looked over and saw that it was Notori, whose internal strength base had been suppressed to the second tribulation. Add to this the fact that he had thrown himself in front of the others to protect them, and it made sense that he would meet this sad fate. A few of the other men pulled him aside to protect him from the onslaught of ghostfish, but it was too late. Natori had indeed been used as a defensive shield by the ruthless Tamer. Without batting an eye, Tamer tipped his lifeless body into the water. I gave you too many chances, he uttered coldly. A strange light bloomed from the sea of reincarnation and wrapped around Natori. Then he dissolved into the aqueous environs. Meanwhile, as time passed, Maximus and the other three felt the pressure gradually increase. The number of ghostfish attacks remained the same. There were still over a thousand, but the quality was steadily increasing. The strength of a purple fire ghostfish was equivalent to a high-level fourth tribulation true god. This was a challenge even for Tamer at this point. Wait, wait a little longer. Maybe the rush will end soon, Tamer thought with anticipation. However, he would be disappointed in the end. Maximus' ship was now about two-thirds of the way across the sea. At this point, blood-red ghostfish began to appear. They had reached the early stages of the Fifth Tribulation. Facing such strength, even without using the Chaos Divine tool, Maximus still needed to go all out in order to kill them easily. As for Zinc, he needed to use all his strength to defend himself. The appearance of the blood-red flaming ghostfish immediately caused serious injuries among Tamer's group. Some cultivators fell and were immediately absorbed by the underwater luminescence. It was important to know that if one was devoured by the ghost fire, they wouldn't even have a chance of being reincarnated. They would completely disappear from the world. There were more than 10 blood flame ghost fish attacking at once. This was a disaster for Tamer and his group, as among them, only Tamer had the strength to fend off the vicious creatures. His followers had fallen into a sorry state. Miserable screams could be heard without end. See your brother, save me! A young woman shouted. I regret coming in the first place! Another screamed. At the moment of death, all humanity was exposed. Why had they followed Tamer? They had no doubt believed they would secure a bright future by doing so. Little did they know they would meet such a sorry end. Tamer was furious with the inadequateness of his followers. He was tempted to use his Chaos Divine tool, but if he did, the divine origin in his body would be used up in an instant and he would be in an extremely weak position the next time they were surrounded. I originally wanted to save you all, but that was foolish, he declared. The sky-trembling lightning divine body was unleashed, and Taomer descended like a lightning god. Dominating heaven, thunder god fist! Thunder destroying the world, he shouted. Lightning flashed and thunder rumbled. Then a path for the ship was opened up. Meanwhile, Maximus and the other three formed two groups and attacked one after another, forcefully opening up a path of their own. Mirak heaved a sigh of relief. Since there were four of them, he hadn't even needed to use his divine tools. Wait, Tamer is approaching us. Wait for him. Meshia suddenly announced. Mirak, Maximus, and Zink did not refute the proposal. No one knew what dangers awaited them when they were near the other side of the river. The more people they had, the safer they would be. 
As they consciously lowered the speed of the reincarnation ship, Tamer quickly caught up with them. After killing the ghost fish that surrounded him with a punch, Tamer leapt up and landed on the reincarnation ship where Maximus and the other three were. He looked embarrassed. Before, he had been unabashedly arrogant, yet his recent experiences had humbled him. However, Tamer didn't have time to explain his state of mind because the reincarnation ship had lowered its speed. Naturally, it was surrounded by the ghost fish again. The five of them attacked immediately. With this much combined strength, it was easier to open up a path. The five of them were also divided into two groups. Mirak and Maximus in one group, Meshia, Tamer were in another, and Zink was in charge of observing the situation. In the current situation, Zink's all-out attack was of little use. They were now about four-fifths to the other side. Everyone's expression was solemn. They were exhausted, yet they couldn't let down their guard even for a second. Suddenly, the surface of the sea in front of them fluctuated violently, like a tsunami was about to form. In the next moment, a colossal object slowly emerged from the surface of the water, and red flames suddenly shot out of the sky. It dyed the entire space red. Red typically represented heat, passion, and fighting spirit. However, the red that appeared at this moment was filled with a strange and eerie feeling. It was no different from the ghostly fire on the fish's bodies. Yet, at the same time, it was much stronger, beyond comparison. Soon, what appeared in everyone's line of sight was a ghost fish that was hundreds of times bigger than the standard versions. Its aura swept over them like a monstrous wave. This ghost fish is probably close to the level of a true god at the seventh tribulation, Mirak proposed, his expression ugly. Although the internal strength base was suppressed, it didn't mean that everyone's eyesight and senses were suppressed as well. They were all high true gods at their peak, so they could naturally sense their opponent's strength. In the past, this wouldn't have been a problem. But now that everyone's internal strength base was suppressed to the third or fourth tribulation true god level, the prospect of facing the monumental fish was extremely terrifying. The red ghost fish used its ghostly eyes to glance at everyone, letting out a muted roar that was only registered in their divine souls. This was none other than the Ghost Fish King. Many of its descendants had just been wiped out, and so it was solely focused on turning the five humans before it into a heap of ash. However, due to the rules of the Land of Reincarnation, before the five of them attacked, the Ghost Fish King could not make a move. What should we do? Mirak asked. Everyone frowned. In the face of this ghost fish king, it was obvious that they wouldn't be able to defeat it with just the strength of this small group. However, if they were to face it all together, they would be afraid that the ship of reincarnation would be blasted into a remote orbit by the aftershocks of the battle. Leave the reincarnation ship to me. I'll stabilize it. However, I can only rely on the four of you to make a move. In any case, my strength won't be of any use against this ghost fish, Zink advised. Mirak nodded slowly, then announced, This plan is feasible. We will leave the ship to you. Our safety is in your hands, Maximus stated solemnly. Don't worry, Zink reassured him. He knew that the hopes and dreams of the four most powerful cultivators in the eastern territories were now riding on him. Tamer and Meshia hesitated. Strictly speaking, both of them had a grudge with Zink, so they naturally didn't trust him much. At the same time, they really couldn't think of any other way to stabilize the reincarnation ship. Thinking that, at the very least, Zink wouldn't harm Maximus, the two of them gritted their teeth and decided to trust him. Attack! The four of them prepared. 
Mirak gave the order. In the next moment, they jumped up one after another, launching their mightiest attacks. Purple Cloud Divine Arm! Heavenly Shrouding Demon Axe Slash! Grand True Marshal Slash! Thunder destroys the world! The Ghost Fish King was restricted by the rules of the Land of Reincarnation and couldn't attack first. But now, Maximus and the others had acted decisively. It let out a soundless roar, and its red aura turned into all kinds of attacks, bombarding Maximus and the other three. An attack that was close to the Seventh Tribulation True God would have been nothing to Maximus and the other three in the past. But now, they struggled to defend themselves. Their attacks collided with the ghostly fire. An ear-piercing explosion filled the Sea of Reincarnation. The water began to churn violently, and heavy waves continued to spread in all directions. Freeze! Zinc shouted out explosively, and Divine Essence surged, firmly stabilizing the ship of reincarnation. The four top warriors muffled out groans and used the aftershocks to return to the reincarnation ship. This won't do! Such an attack is useless against that ghost fish! The red ghost fire is simply repelling us, Mirak observed. The ghost fish king let out a silent roar of anger. Maximus and the other three had already retreated out of the range of its attacks, so it could only stare at them furiously. Maximus noticed this and couldn't help but let out a surprised cry. He explained, I was curious about this huge ghost fish earlier, but it seems like it is restricted by the land of reincarnation. As long as we are a distance away from it, it won't be able to attack us. He rubbed his chin. Meshia was delighted as she proposed. This will give us time to rest and recover. Tamer shot back. But mind you, in this case, the ghost fish king will have time to recover too. Mirak frowned slightly. This was indeed a problem. The cycle would just continue over and over. Then we can use our Chaos Divine tools, Maximus concluded. It was obvious that their previous attack could not cause any harm to the ghost fish. Instead, it was they who had suffered a great deal. If we do that, we have to get him on the first try. Otherwise, we won't have time to recover, Mirak proposed. Damn it! If it wasn't for the reincarnation ocean, Tamer demurred. He was enraged at being so suppressed in his strength. Maximus narrowed his eyes. He stated, The problem now is that we can't let that ghost fish recover. In that case, I have an idea. Oh, please speak, Mirak chimed in, his eyes lighting up. Maximus smiled, then went on. You see, my chaos divine tool has the effect of trapping. Meshia and Teomer were startled and immediately understood what Maximus wanted to do. Mirak, on the other hand, was still somewhat uncertain. He had never personally experienced the power of the Nine Pythons' fire flag. But soon, he would understand. Maximus took out the Nine Pythons' fire-controlling flag, and its formation wrapped around them and the Ghostfish King. The nine fire pythons rolled around, and without being affected by the Sea of Reincarnation, they attacked the Ghostfish King. Maximus sat cross-legged on the ship and said, The Fish King is being restrained by my formation, but the nine python fire-controlling flag consumes a great deal of energy. He stared at them with bright eyes. Mirak suddenly understood and immediately took out a bottle of pills. He explained, This is an upper-class divine pill, called the Heavenly Net Pill, specially concocted by a Grand Master Alchemist of our sect. I think it will be useful to you. Maximus accepted it with satisfaction, and then looked at Meshia and Tamer. The two of them were somewhat unwilling, but they could only clench their teeth and take out their own pill supplies. After getting three bottles of divine pills, Maximus said, now, I'll have to rely on the three of you. At this moment, the Ghostfish King and the Nine Fire Pythons were engaged in a fierce battle. 
Mirak and the other two took out their Chaos Divine tools. Mirak's divine weapon was a demon staff shrouded in demon energy. Meshia's was the Scarlet Refined Divine Sword, and Tamer's was the Ninth Heaven Lightning Mirror. When the three of them used their Chaos Divine tools, their power immediately skyrocketed, and their energy soared to the sky. This was a whole new level. It was precisely because their internal strength bases had been suppressed to an extremely low level that they were able to unleash power that far surpassed that of a fourth tribulation true god. The red flames surrounding the ghost fish king's body covered the sky, but they were all blasted away by the lightning mirror. The demon staff and the scarlet refined divine sword's attacks struck the ghost fish king's body. The huge fish rolled about, stirring up waves and roaring endlessly in pain. Yet the human warriors' faces were now turning pale. Sustaining these attacks was sucking their divine energy dry. Zinc suddenly attacked. Three gentle energy ribbons swept onto Mirak and the other two and brought them back onto the reincarnation ship. At this time, the three of them couldn't care less about their pain. They all took out precious pills and swallowed them recovering their divine essence at the fastest speed possible. Mirak and the others were filled with hatred in their hearts. There was clearly still a large amount of divine essence in their bodies, but it was being suppressed. The feeling was infuriating. At this moment, Maximus was under a lot of pressure. Now, it could be said that he was fighting the Ghostfish King alone. The Ghost Fish King kept attacking the Nine Python's fire controlling formation. Maximus's divine essence was being consumed at a terrifying speed. Luckily, he was holding a divine pill in his mouth and swallowed it immediately. The grade of the pill was high. It turned into a wave of majestic energy. Maximus circulated the Nine Flames fire formula with all his strength and turned all of this majestic energy into divine origin. Then he poured it out and tried his best not to waste even a little bit of it.